Praise the Lord, boys and girls. It's Dr. Beasley, and it is Sunday school time. Do you hold those accountable when they do something wrong? In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the justice system. You know, when God is in charge, justice will prevail. Justice will win. Let's get started. This is the Apostolic Faith Church Junior Sunday School for students third through fifth grade. The title of our lesson today is Justice, Judges, and Priest. Our scriptures are coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, 18, 18 through 20, 17, 8 through 13, and 19, 15 through 21. And our scriptures are coming from the easy to read version. Let's say our everyday prayer. Jesus, gentle shepherd, guide my feet today. Keep me in thy footsteps. Never let me stray. Give me an open heart and mind to permanently stay in thy word as I worship you today. Teach me how to keep my spirit and my body clean as humble children ought to be, so I may dwell with thee eternally. Let's get started with our everyday living story, just leaders. Eugene's father was a judge in their county's criminal court system. Eugene was fascinated with his father's job. Today was take your child to work day. And Eugene was finally old enough to go to work with his dad. He sat on the court proceedings and listened diligently to each case. By lunchtime, Eugene had tons of questions in his mind. His dad was special to be able to make decisions over people's lives. Dad, why do we have judges? Eugene asked. Judges provide guidance and consequences for bad actions, Eugene's father said. Judges are leaders or officials, such as the president, who helps lead the country, and pastors who lead churches. It is our job to help take care and guide people to follow laws and ensure justice is served when the rules are not followed. When people go astray by committing crimes or just need help or mediation, judges provide them with guidance and or consequences for their negative actions. In most cases, this deters them from breaking the law and putting themselves and others in danger. It makes for a more peaceful community for everyone. Eugene sat, thought for a moment and said, so it's like principals and guidance counselors at school. They lead the school and decide punishment when rules are broken. They also act as mediators when students have disputes. It's also like having parents at home who are leaders over the house and enforce rules and consequences. And I know you all have rules and consequences for your actions when you do not follow the rules at home like get off your cell phone, go to bed because you have to go to school in the morning, do your homework so it won't be so late that you go to bed and not be able to wake up in the morning. Yes, there are rules that are enforced at home. Yes, that's right, said Eugene's father, without leaders enforcing rules and laws, there may be complete chaos and confusion, which is dangerous for everyone. 
Just think about it. If you stayed up all night on your cell phone and could not get up in the morning to go to school, there are consequences for that, right? You're going to be sleepy and tired at school, falling, falling asleep, and the teachers will have to tell you, wake up, and then maybe they'll call your parents, and then you'll get a punishment. So we want to follow the rules at home and in our court system. Let's move on. All right. The world today is governed by laws and leaders to ensure that we all remain safe and can give and can live our lives together and peacefully. It is God's will that we put measures in place to maintain peace and order and that our leaders look to Jesus for guidance when making decisions that impact people, communities, and society. Let's go on. Yes, what a wonderful story about Eugene, his father in the justice system. But let's take a look at our keep in mind scripture. It's coming from Deuteronomy 16, 18 from the easy to read version. Choose men to be judges and officers in every town that the Lord your God gives you. Every tribe must do this, and these men must be fair in judging the people. Well, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses was a judge. Moses was ruler over all the people in the land. So he had to put judges, and other officers in place. And he did just that. So let's take a look at the word justice. What does justice mean? Justice is when a person gets what they deserve, whether good or bad, whether they like it or not. Sometimes it's easy to understand justice, I guess, if we give an example. Say for instance, you get all the answers right on a test. You get a perfect grade. That's justice. You get an A because you answered all the questions perfectly and you got what you deserve. Now let's take another example. Now say you gave some wrong answers to the question. Should you still get a perfect grade? I don't think so. Instead, you'll get the grade you deserve based on how you answered the question. That's justice too. Even though it probably wouldn't feel good that you got a poor grade, but still it's justice. Now, the last example, let's say the whole class took a test but the teacher gave everyone a zero because one person cheated on the test. Is that justice? No, it isn't because only one person cheated, not the entire class. All right, you are understanding justice very well. Justice means to be fair. All right, let's take a look at Judges. Well, judges provide guidance and consequences for the bad actions. Remember Eugene? Eugene's father said judges are leaders or officials, such as the president who helps lead our country. Also, they are those who control our courthouse system. And also, let's take a look at priests. Priests who lead churches are our pastors as well. And their job is to help take care and guide people to follow God law, God's law and ensure justice is served when the rules are not followed. That 
is justice. And remember, Moses in Deuteronomy, he had to appoint judges and priests. And in his time, priests were those who took the real heavy cases, those who killed other people. Imagine the pastor and the priest being in charge and laying down the law for those who did wrong and harm to others. All right, that was your keep in mind scripture. Let's go on. Now, what have you learned? We didn't read through all our scriptures today, but what I have done, I have put three verses from our lesson and you're going to fill in the blank. Let's do it together. Choose men to be blank and blank in every town that the Lord, your God, gives you. Now, if you don't have your pencil and paper to write the answers down, put the video on pause. Go to your Bible, look up the scriptures, and write the words in the blank spaces. Let's go on. Every tribe must do this, and these men must be blank in judging the people. Let's go to our first one. Choose men to be judges and officers. And these men must be fair. I hope you said fair. All right, let's go on. 19, you must always be fair. You must blank and blank some people over other people. What should you do? Not favor. All right, you got that right. You must not take money to change your mind in judgment, right? If someone is wrong, you should not take their money and charge them for what they did wrong. Money blank the eyes of the wise people and changes what a good person will say. Money blinds the eyes. I hope you said blind. Okay, money blinds. And our last verse, goodness and fairness. You must try very hard to be good and fair all the time. Then you will live and keep the land that the blank, blank, blank is giving you. And what did you write? The Lord your God is giving you. You did a wonderful job with filling in the blanks. All right. Your challenge for this week is to be a leader like the judge, a leader like the pastor or the priest. Let's ask three people if they believe in God and if God helps them to make important decisions. I know you're going to do that this week. Now, do you hold those accountable when they do something wrong? Yes, you do. There are consequences. Okay, so we found out about the justice system. Let's go on. As always, that's the end of our lesson and I hope you enjoyed our lesson today. I certainly did. But if anyone would like to get baptized, they may call the church, have their parents call the church at 773-373-8500. And as always, our pastor, Sister Smith, and Bishop Smith, thank you for being a part of our lesson today. Let's end in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for our lesson on justice, judges, and priests. And we pray, Lord Jesus, in any circumstance that we run up against, that we would be fair and honest and true. Lord Jesus, keep us safe this week in your holy, precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right. What a wonderful lesson. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.